Hey folks, it's Van Jungbeck again and this time it's a really short lesson about dominant scales. So I made some videos like Scale Madness Part 1 and Scale Madness Part 2 and this time it's Scale Madness Part 3 on dominant scales. And I want to make it short and don't, you know, bore you with endless explanations. In Gypsy Jazz we have some scales that are very important. Let's say we move from a G dominant 7 to a C. So we have the typical release in the key of C. Dominant chord, tonic chord, or like dominant chord, tonic chord in minor. So actually, what most of the people play is playing the arpeggio, like G, B, D, F, G, B, D, F, G. Learning that all over the fretboard, and then enrich it with the notes of some scales. So the obvious one is G mixolydian, but I would not call it G mixolydian. It's more like, you know, it's more like you're still in C major. You're just playing C major, but you have the notes of the arpeggio under your fingers. So you can play something that's very related to G and then just use the important colors of the C major scale that will make a normal G dominant 7 chord a G 13 chord, or for example a G 39 chord, like that, or a G 9 chord, stuff like that. That will give you the possibility to make it sound like that. So you have the fingering of the arpeggio like G, B, D and then you got for example the E, the 13 here. So you play something like or you play and then it sounds not like a G mixolydian scale, it sounds really like G dominant 7, 9. And you do of course the same with the A, playing like like that or you go like so you play the notes of the arpeggios and enrich it with A or E basically or maybe with a raised 11 like everything is possible and this is mixolydian the next scale would be the whole tone scale a symmetric scale and it happens a lot in gypsy jazz. It's this this kind of thing, you know, just whole tones. And this is not related to the arpeggio. This is some symmetric stuff. And on that, you gotta better make riffs. And the chords are very important here. The first voicing from the E to the G string looks like this. So you got like B, E flat or D sharp and G. The next looks like G, B, D sharp. And then we got like D sharp, G, B. These are important because they can be moved around in whole tones like or This is a typical Django sound that's very important for gypsy swing. The next scale is not really a scale, it's more an arpeggio, it's the diminished arpeggio. The diminished chord looks a bit, you know, in Gypsy Jazz like a D7 form and can be moved in minor thirds around the fretboard. There are some licks that you know, the same that I played before, like... You can play that faster, like... Stuff like that. Also here, you're very welcome to learn the arpeggio also from the lowest note to the highest note. When you have a G dominant 7 chord, the note to start from would be the note a half tone above the root, G sharp. And then you easily will be able, by moving it around in minor thirds, moving around, around the fretboard in minor thirds, to figure the other three notes. It's G sharp, B, D and F. These are the notes to start from. So G sharp dim is a substitution for G and G sharp dim is the same chord then F dim, B dim and D dim. Learn all the voicings like this one, like you know, root, muted A string, the little bar chord covering F, B flat and D. The B flat is not to be heard because the ring finger is playing natural B. And you can move that around in minor thirds. The one from the A string is that one. So you got B, F, G sharp and D. 
Sorry. Like this. And the last one would be on the lower, on the on the upper four strings, like. And then you can do the same with the three note voicings, what I did with the whole tone scale as well, instead of playing this whole form. You would play like leaving out the D string, stuff like that. So the next scale would be the half tone whole tone scale. And this is called the dim scale for good reason. Half tone whole tone means really like you're playing the root of your dominant chord, playing a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone, a whole tone, a half tone, and then you hear at the G again. Sounds very cool. So the chord that we're talking about is this one. 13 flat 9. Whenever you see that in the sheet, 13 flat 9, you know it's the dim sound, the diminished scale sound. Like. This chord is like with F, B, E, and A flat, which makes it a G dominant 7, 13 flat 9. And you can move it again in minor thirds on the fretboard. But what you can also do, and this is very nice, because with the symmetric scales you've got to find nice little riffs. And one of it is like choosing a G triad and then afterwards playing an E triad in the very same position. Like B, G, uh, sorry, B, D, G for the G triad and then B, E, G sharp for the E triad. And then you move that in minor thirds. B flat and G. And then C sharp and B flat. And then E. And of course uh, D sharp. And then you're in again. And this is how you play licks like. Sounds very good. This is the sound of the diminished scale. The last one that I consider is very important when you go from G to C is the alterated scale. This is also very important. It starts with a Phrygian third, like G, A flat, B flat, covering the flat nine and the raised nine. And then continuing from the third, from the B, like the whole tone scale. are like flat 9, raised 9, or raised 9, flat 13, all these kind of sounds. This is very cool. Ah, there's one I forgot, and this is the harmonic minor scale, of course. In G, it would be called G Phrygian dominant, with a... Which is basically C harmonic minor. This can also lead to major but most of the time it's leading to minor. But these are the most important scales that we use in gypsy jazz to cover that kind of sounds that you need in gypsy jazz. And like ex with the exception of the symmetric scales it's very important to, to have licks that concentrate on the arpeggio notes. This is very very cool. So even if you play like a G down 7 flat 13 you have the triad here and you really think in triads, and here's the flat 13, and you can do like... This is very good to do it and to think it like that. So it will sound like G dominant 7 and not like some kind of random scale. There is one exception that I want to talk about in the, in the end, and this is maybe the last thing that's very important for gypsy jazz. When you have a double dominant chord in your progression, for example, the D dominant 7 in All of Me, like... In all of me, wanna take all of me? Can't you see I'm no good without you? Take my lips, I wanna lose them. Take my arms, that one. I'll never use them. This is a static dominant chord that's not released immediately. And this chord happens everywhere. For example, take the A train. Ba, 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 ba. 
and then you go also to D minor and G. It's the same like Lulu swing. And on that chord, on that G, we need the sound of the raised 11, of the sharp 11. So, and the scale that covers all these notes we need. Of course, the principle is again learning to try it with the seventh. But then the scale that's behind there is the A harmonic minor, A melodic minor scale. And from D on, that can be named like D mixolydian raised 11. You probably heard of that. And this is the scale that we need here. So if I'm playing like C, then D, and I'm playing mixolydian raised 11. And then I'm 2 5 to C, it will sound like that. So this sound on the D with the raised 11 is very important and also essential in gypsy jazz. Stuff like that. So and to me these are the most important scales to use, like to summarize them in the end. It was like Mixolydian, which is more like playing the arpeggio and enrich it with the 9 and the 13 of the major scale. So in G it would be the arpeggio with F, E and A on top. Then we got the symmetric scales, like the dim scale and the whole tone scale, the dim arpeggio. Then we got like scales like the alterate scale. This is a melodic minor mode. It's the seven modes of melodic minor. For example, of A flat melodic minor. So we play A flat melodic minor on G7. And then we had like um, the uh, Phrygian dominant Phrygian scale, which is like C harmonic minor on G dominant 7. And um, then we had the static dominant chord, the double dominant chord, which is always on the second degree. And there we like to play Mixolydian raised 11. So I hope that was a quick shortcut that helped you out with your scales. Of course, you got to learn them yourselves. The fingerings are, doesn't really matter, you know, you practice more in licks and in phrases and that will help you, I think. Okay, subscribe to my channel if you like that. There's tons of material, some great players, great guests and great lessons. See you soon. Bye.